This is KGW News at Sunrise. A dangerous new drug is making its way across the country. It is called xylazine, and it's an animal tranquilizer that can cause everything from severe skin reactions to death. Ahead, the warning from local doctors following a few suspected cases in Oregon. Also this morning, ODOT's plan to toll Portland area freeways is getting more pushback, this time in the form of a new bill to stop a major part of the plan from happening. More on that coming up here in just a few minutes. Plus. Well, if you've seen the movie or you've ever seen the musical before, you know that Eliza is always going, wow. <laughs> so I'm doing a lot of wowing in my <laughs> dressing room. So that's how the star of <laughs> My Fair Lady prepares for the show, happening now at the Keller Auditorium. Coming up on Sunrise, why she calls the demands of a national tour bittersweet. Hmm. That is a, a talent right there, <laughs> being able to make that noise. <laughs> Rod Hill sometimes will make a noise during his weather. For, yesterday, for example, he, tossed, he started to roar like a lion. Yeah. Yes. Well, the lion is still a little angry, my friends. <laughs> <laughs> Let's get you uh -oh. to the weather map. Uh, we continue to see just really cold air aloft, leading to low snow levels. Last night, it was pretty quiet for a number of hours while the cloud deck broke a bit. That's allowed temperatures mainly on the west side to get down to freezing. So this is snow or snow mix coming in from the west right now. Radar is picking up uh, snow in the hills outside of Newburgh and uh, a mix has been coming to McMinnville and up toward Hillside. So especially out in Washington, Yamhill counties, we're on guard for freezing temperatures. It could lead to a wintry mix of showers and some icy spots on roadways. There you can see 31 in Scappoose up north, 31 in Hillsboro, 38 though in downtown Portland, much warmer. Sheridan, Dallas, both freezing. McMinnville holding right there at 35 at the airport, but other parts of Yamhill County are colder. And right now Salem's at 35. This will be a showery day uh, and then moving forward, we'll get up to 43 at noon. We'll be in the 40s this afternoon. Like yesterday, expect some downpours and expect some pretty good hail showers out there as well. That's your forecast. All right, more from Rod coming up here in about eight minutes. But right now, our top story this hour, it's about ODOT's plan to toll Portland area freeways. So the state says drivers could still start paying tolls as early as late next year. But a new bill moving through the Oregon legislature hopes to put the brakes on that plan. KGW's Devin Haskins is live with us in studio this morning. And Devin, this bill would not be an all out ban on tolling. Yeah, uh, Christine, that's correct. It's Senate Bill 933. It wants to force ODOT to stop its plan to toll drivers along I-205 and I-5. But like you said, it would still allow tolling on the interstate bridge across the Columbia. The bill is sponsored by Democratic Senator Mark Meek from Gladstone and several others. Under the ODOT plan, drivers will pay a fee to cross the Abernathy and Tualatin bridges near Oregon City. It would be congestion pricing, so it'll cost you more to drive across those bridges at certain times of the day. But if Senate Bill 933 passes, ODOT would need to find the money somewhere else. One of the people helping promote the bill, former state Senator Rick Metzger. He served 12 years in the state Senate and was the head of the Transportation Committee for eight years. He argues that congestion pricing does not make sense. One of the goals of congestion pricing, uh, which is to move people, uh, encourage them to take transit uh, uh, rather than their automobile uh, to their different services. Where ODOT is starting in the South Metro area, um, tolling multiple places on the Abernathy and uh, the Tualatin Bridge areas, South 205. Between Gladstone and Tualatin, uh, there is no transit service. There is no TriMet. There is no passenger bus service. Well, so now there's another group. There's a grassroots group of citizens called Vote Before Tolls. They're gathering signatures to vote for a statewide vote on tolling. So I think the big question is, how much would tolls cost? ODOT estimates around $575 a year on tolls. But KGW estimates that if you cross both of those bridges in peak hours, it could, could cost around $2,000 a year. Brenda? All right, thank you, Devin. Other headlines this morning that we're tracking for you. Expect delays coming off the east side of the Burnside Bridge and MLK Boulevard until about 7 o'clock this morning as PBOT crews install a new traffic signal. Drivers heading east on Burnside will have to turn right on MLK and drive around the block to get back onto Burnside. The closure also affects cyclists and pedestrians. There's also a closure on the Morrison Bridge this weekend. That'll last from 10 o'clock tonight until 5 o'clock Monday morning. 
It's part of the Morrison Bridge paint project, which will wrap up later this year. And then on Monday, Amtrak restarts its popular direct route from Portland to Vancouver, B.C. Service from Seattle to Vancouver resumed last fall, but this will fully restore the line. It was disrupted at the beginning of the pandemic when Canada closed its border. And those are some of your Friday morning headlines. The FDA is cracking down on a powerful animal tranquilizer tied to drug overdoses. Right now, xylazine is getting mixed in with dangerous, often fatal drugs like fentanyl. Our Catherine Cook spoke with experts who say it's only a matter of time before it lands in Portland. It's the drug making headlines around the U.S. Some call it Trank, others the zombie drug. Its real name, xylazine, a veterinary medication used to sedate animals. On the black market, xylazine is acting like water on a grease fire in a country already fully engulfed in an opioid crisis. More deaths, more ODs, and in some users, a skin rash that can range from minor to severe. The idea that skin ulcers that lead to surgeries, maybe even amputations, it's horrific. Dr. Amanda Risser works at Central City Concern in Portland. She's senior medical director of substance use disorder services. So far, she says xylazine doesn't appear to have reached Oregon's drug supply the way it's gripped other states. She's only heard of two possible but unconfirmed cases here. Right now, Risser and others in harm reduction are monitoring local drug supplies for xylazine and spreading the word among users. It may be there and just I'm not seeing it, the, the fallout yet. And so I think everyone is at risk for being exposed to xylazine when they're using opioids these days, um, as, just as everyone right now is, is being exposed to fentanyl. As with so many drugs, Risser says those taking xylazine likely don't realize it. It's an adulterant, often mixed with fentanyl, which many users smoke. Some evidence shows xylazine causes users to become sleepier and more prone to overdose. There's just a lot of stuff that happens when you make things, things in a lab. And there are other complications that can lead to serious skin wounds like these. When users build tolerance to smoking the xylazine-laced drugs, many turn to injecting them. If xylazine is present, Risser says it can cause blood vessels to constrict, starving the skin of blood and oxygen. All the things that you know help you heal from a wound when it occurs or an infection. So it's kind of a breakdown of the skin's immune system. As harm reduction networks prepare to treat those symptoms in Portland, they hope what they're seeing in other cities will help them to be ready. Catherine Cook, KGW News. Investigators in Washington County, meanwhile, say they have solved a cold case from 1988. 68-year-old Robert A. Trapps, you see him right there, is accused of killing his estranged wife, Deborah. Authorities arrested him yesterday morning at his home in Newburgh. 35 years ago, Deborah's body was found in the trunk of her car on a dead-end road in Beaverton. But her case went cold for decades until the DA's cold case unit reopened it in 2021. After re-interviewing witnesses and re-examining forensic evidence, investigators made their case to a grand jury, and the grand jury indicted Atrops on Tuesday. It just goes to show that this is a process, and uh, you know we rely on the work of a team of people, not just the team of people that are working on it today, but teams of people working on it over the generations to make sure that we're pursuing justice. Atrops has pleaded not guilty. Well, our Cannon Beach and Rose City Sky Cams caught an out of this world show. Look at that. Venus and Jupiter appear very close together mm. as the two planets pass each other. Technically, this is known as a conjunction, but astronomers also call it a planetary kiss. A smooch. Oh. A smooch, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So at their closest, Venus and Jupiter appear to be just half a degree apart, which is about the diameter of the full moon. In actuality, they are 400 million miles away from each other. So by car, it would take you how long? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Isn't you got all nice? the science yeah. down. Now, Rob, why don't you do some math? <laughs> Get going with the math. Hey, our, our producer, Maddie Nelson, was just uh -huh. in her ear a moment ago yeah. saying, Rod, that uh, sunset, yeah. never mind the sunrise, still waiting for that this morning. Yeah. Sunset <laughs> is going to start kicking in at 6 o'clock this week. Yeah, so, well, wow. tonight. Okay. Tonight we go from, uh, we hit that milestone of the sun going down at 6 p.m. Nice. Now. And then, of course, a uh, week from tomorrow, from, uh, tomorrow night, we spring forward, and then the sun will be going down after 7. 
but it will be dark again until after 7.30. So, you know, you, you get some, you give some, right? <laughs> Here's a look at uh, our um, Oregon Washington map with shower activity coming in straight from the west this morning. Number one story out the door is that we do have freezing spots, mainly out here in the west side. You can see snow showers over the coast range uh, and some snow certainly in the, in the hills of Yamhill and Washington counties, but down low there are some 32 degree spots. So if you live in coming in from the west side, Yamhill and Washington counties right now seem to be the bullseye even down in the parts of Polk County. Just be aware you could find some icy or freezing spots on the roadways. Uh, so far, it, uh, and we think it will continue to hold well above freezing in the Portland area. 38 in Portland right now. You go over to the east side, drop tails of 40. Down south, there's Westland at 36. And Salem also at McNary Field is holding at 35 right now. 40s over at the coast, 34 out in the Dallas. Hood River's been in the upper 20s this morning. And then we have uh, teens out in Baker City. Okay. Our day, once we get through this little flirtation of icy spots this morning, turns into what we had yesterday afternoon. Some sun breaks, scattered showers, turning heavy times with some hail. Here's uh, the scattered shower look for uh, 730 this morning, and then that just continues. As we go into the afternoon, you get to see some of the yellow and kind of orange colors. Those are those spotty downpours with some hail shower activity. Uh, seven day forecast. So today back up to 45. FYI, the forecasters will be spending a lot of time today into tonight watching wind patterns for tomorrow morning. There's a front coming in tomorrow morning. If the low positions itself just right, it would pull east winds out of the gorge. And certainly it's at least a possibility that parts of the Lama Valley, maybe in the scope that we saw a couple of mornings ago down in the Dallas, Albany, uh, Salem areas could get some snow sticking to start the day and then transition into rain with a high of 43. So we're watching that for tomorrow. Starting Sunday through Wednesday, I think these are mainly daytime scattered showers firing up, but overnight lows will be freezing and any precipitation overnight would be some snow showers as we continue to be cold. That's my fortune. <laughs> I let you finish that one out. Okay. Thank you, Rod. <laughs>